Hello and welcome, I'm Bert the Stormtrooper, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers Armada Galvatron, and I love this toy. But before we get into the review, if you haven't done so already, please take a moment to consider subscribing to the channel. It won't cost you anything, but it will help me and the channel. If you'd like to further help out the channel, please share with your friends if you like what you see. Take this video and share it on your social media. Invite them to come over, check out the channel, and subscribe as well. Now that we're losing our community options and our notifications, the best way to keep up on what's going on with this channel is to come back and check it out often. I usually upload one to two videos a week, sometimes more. If you'd like to further help out the channel, I have placed a donate button up at the top banner. If you want to click on that, I surely do appreciate it. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Now let's check out this figure. Hello and welcome. I'm Bert the Stormtrooper, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers Armada Galvatron, and I love this toy. Originally released in February of 2003, he is a Gigacon class figure, which is the equivalent of today's modern leader class figures and he originally retailed for approximately $25. Take a moment to process that. A with the equivalent of today's leader class figures retailed in 2003 for half the price. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> now, Transformers in the 2000s uh, got a tendency of doing something uh, <laughs> when it came to Galvatron, Megatron uh, thing here. Uh, Robots in Disguise did it, Armada did it, Energon did it, and Cybertron did it. And that's basically they took Megatron, repainted him, and just called him Galvatron. And they just sold you the same figure again. And, and that is what we've got here. This is an exact copy of the original green Armada Megatron. He's just been repainted into whites and purples. That's it. Other than that, oh, the sound chip is different. He's got different phrases. But other than that, it's the exact same figure. Even the Minicon is the same. So where, where before this guy was called Leader One, uh, now he's called Clinch. And he's like this little, almost like a lunar vehicle. It looks like a mix between a lunar tr vehicle and, and a missile truck or a gun truck. It's kind of what this looks like, which is kind of cool, actually. Uh, and considering that in the show they were based on the moon, the Decepticons were, um, that would make sense for him. So, so you know, kind of cool. Uh, very basic little figure here. The Minicons, what they do is they would unlock special features. And, you know, in the show, they they, they would just make the Transformers more powerful. Transform this guy. Just straighten out the top here. Take these pieces, these guns, and just fold them into the back there. Straighten out these uh, shoulder pieces there. And there you go. There is Clench in robot mode. And he's approximately two and a half inches tall. And not a whole lot for him to do in robot mode, really. Uh, they, they, they really just kind of stood there. And uh, they, they were just kind of there on the show in robot mode. They didn't do anything on the, until they transformed into vehicle mode, which is what we're going to be doing here. Uh, he does have some weapon modes we'll be looking at here in a sec. But for the most part, you just need him to be a vehicle and you can get everything you need him to be here in vehicle mode. So we'll set him off to the side for the moment and we'll take a look at Galvatron himself. Like I said, he's just a straight repaint of the Armada Megatron and he is an H tank. So here in tank mode, he is approximately eight and a half inches long. If you're looking at just the vehicle itself, if you want to go with the actual cannon, it's going to be about 10 inches long. He's about three and a half inches tall. And he has got mini con ports all over the place. This guy can do all kinds of stuff. So let's start here on this side. So we've got a button right here. If we flip that button, that's going to open these up. And then this is just three more mini con ports where you can just take mini cons and just plug them in. So, you know, again, the more mini cons he has, the more powerful he is. So that's, that's what that one's going to do. Put those in place. Here's a mini com port just for the sake of it. That's just a port for the sake of being a port. So you can put yet another mini con right there. There's one on the side here. You can plug somebody in there as well. Now, right here, this whole section is going to pop out and this is going to open up. And this is supposed to be a mini con jail. So he can capture mini cons and just kind of put them right here in jail. Now, the thing about this is that this thing was never really big enough for any mini cons. So you're not going to be able to close this thing and, and actually shove it back in there. That's the best you're going to get is just kind of drive around with that thing open. But that's it. That's supposed to be the Minicon jail right there. So we'll go ahead and close that back up and put it away. Around the front here, if we move the cannon out of the way, we got these pincher claws right here. These are spring loaded. And the whole idea there is that he could chase a Minicon and just kind of trap them with the claws and then just kind of take them back or, you know, whatever. He just carry, carry them off. So there's that. Here we have another mini com port. This doesn't do anything either other than just kind of be there. However, this does flip. So if you have like a little jet 
Minicon or something like that, you could kind of use it as a, as, I guess, a, low, uh, a launching ramp. Uh, or you can just peg two Minicons on here as well. So you could do that. So again, more Minicons, more power. So there's that one. Here's another port. You can add them there. Port, port. <laughs> These don't do anything. Now, there is another feature right here. This is like a Minicon uh, capturing system right here. So what this does is this is going to come out. I'm actually trying to pull it out when it actually rotates down. Okay, so that rotates down, and then this ramp opens up, and then this claw, there's a little lever right here, and a little spring-loaded claw comes up. Now, the whole idea here is, again, we're going back into that chase scenario. He can be chasing after mini cons and just kind of pull him up, up the ramp, and this guy's going to be a little too big. For, let's do this. So he would kind of pull him up the ramp, and then once they were here, he could grab him with the claw, and he's got him captured. Now he can take him, you know, with him and... You know, make them be his mini cons. So there's that. So there's another feature there. We'll put that claw away. Fold up the ramp and put that away. Now we've got some more mini con ports up here at the top. So a couple of things here. Um, like I said, I did pick this guy up at my local um, collectors club meeting. So this guy, unfortunately, I got him for a really good price and he's in really good shape. He is, however, missing one missile. This guy is supposed to come with three missiles. So you got two missiles back here and you got this, uh, another missile for the front here. So let me see how I want to show this off because this missile that is missing here, they look almost identical, but they're not. So let's do, let's do this. Let's show this off first. Let's show off these last two mini comp ports. So there's a port here on the center on this hatch here. If you plug this guy in here, this is going to be an electronic feature. So now if we turn him to the side, we are going to get some firing sounds. And we've also got a light. And as long as the minicon is being held in place, he's going to keep shooting. Okay, so there's that one. And then we have another feature that is going to be unlocked here by the minicon, which is this port here. So if we plug a minicon in there... We're going to pull back on this, and it's going to flip this guy over, and it's going to make some sounds. Okay, and then if we pull him back and turn him, let me show you kind of what's happening here. You can see that there's kind of like an L shape there. Okay, so if you could just kind of go back into the side, it's going to lock it in place. So now we've got these two missiles here ready to launch. So these are spring-loaded, and when you press on this, it should hit the button so it sounds again, plus launch the missile. Like that. And we can just reset that back again. So now that we have those launched, let me go ahead and show you these. So, of course, the ones that came with Galvatron are supposed to be, or are, gold. Uh, the ones that came with Megatron are red. And if you look at these missiles, they look identical until you get down here to the bottom. Now, you'll notice that the ones that were on this back launcher here have a hook on them. Whereas this one has a ball. So the one with the ball is meant to go here in the cannon. And the way this works is you just load it in place there. And as you saw, that's going to make a sound as well. So when you, this is kind of like a pressure launcher. When you pull back on it, it's going to spit that ball out and launch that cannon. Plus it's going to light up and it's going to make the shooting sound that you just heard. Just like that. You can try and use these, but because that hook there is, you know, it doesn't have a ball. It'll lock into place, but when it launches that's as far as it's going to go. So I guess you can somewhat play with it, but you really kind of need this missile for the good solid launch. And again, I'm using the one from Megatron there. That's why it's red. There you go. Very, very nice missile right there. All right, so we'll go ahead and get these guys loaded back into place. And since we keep talking about Megatron, why don't we go ahead and bring him in for comparison? Here he is with the original offering of the Armada Megatron. So you can see what these guys look like together. And... I've uh, I've not done a review of this guy before. Uh, I'm reviewing this guy because I just picked him up at that collector's meetup. Uh, but my buddy Jason, Patriot Prime, just did a review of this guy recently. If you want to go check him out. He did a really, really good review on this guy. So you can see what those guys look like together. And then here he is with his Generations counterpart, also Armada Megatron. And I have done a review for this guy, so I'll put a link up here. So you can see. I'll put a link up there for Jason's review, and then I'll also put a link for this one as well. So you can see what these guys look like together. And then finally, to take a look at him with something a little more modern, here he is with Siege War for Cybertron uh, Megatron. So you can, you know, again, see him with a little something more, uh, more modern and more up to date. Okay, so now let's get into transformation. And transformation for this guy is going to be 
pretty simple and he is going to get pretty huge so i'm just gonna go ahead and move that up now so we're gonna start with the back of the tank right here and we're just gonna pull these back and you're gonna see right here if you look down here you're gonna see most of the robot anyway but these guys are just gonna come straight down like that and then we're gonna turn him at the waist the power is and the power is his so i guess that's one thing i didn't show is the turret does turn and when the turn turns he says the power is mine shoots three different things and he's gonna keep doing <laughs> doing that get used to that sound he's gonna keep doing it all right we're gonna come back here again we're gonna take these tabs and push them up and then we're gonna take these right here these are gonna tap in right there and there so just secure those in place there and there i said secure secure there you go all right <laughs> and now we can stand them up and again, like I said, he's going to get tall. So there you go. That's better. All right. We're going to take the turret, turn it to the side, to his right. Take the cannon and bring it all the way forward. Now we're going to come here to the sides, open these panels up. And these are going to be our arms. So just reach in there, grab the arm, pull it out. Again, reach in there, open this up, reach in there, grab the arm and pull it out. Close that up. And then finally, this little lever right here, pull that down, and that's going to reveal Galvatron's head. And there is Galvatron in robot mode. Here in robot mode, Galvatron is approximately seven and a half inches tall at the top of the head. Ten if you want to go all the way to the top of these pylons here. And uh, yeah, he looks, again, he looks pretty good because I like this design, but it's just an exact repaint of the original um, Armada Megatron. And so just for comparison, we'll bring him in real quick and you can see what Armada megatron looked like so again same exact figure just a different paint job so we'll move this guy off to the side and we'll bring in that generations figure so you can see the evolution of this guy i guess they never did give us a white and purple and pink version of this and uh, that's a good thing hasbro hold off you don't have to do that we got two of this guy already that's good enough so there you go there you can see what these guys look like together and then finally, sort of something a little more modern. Here he is, once again, with Siege War for Cybertron. This is the classic animation style Megatron. So you can see what these guys look like together. Okay, so getting back to Galvatron here. As far as articulation goes, his head can turn. That's going to be about it. His arms can rotate. However, these big shoulder pylons are going to be hindered by the actual cannon itself. So... You know, as much as they can, you maybe you want to move the cannon, whatever the case may be. The arms can go in and out. You have a rotation here at the forearm, and you have a bend at the elbow. This hand has moving fingers as well, and there's a reason for that. We'll take a look at that in a second. Uh, this one, same thing. Uh, shoulder can rotate in and out on the shoulder, bend at the elbow, rotation at the elbow. And then this one has a rotation at the wrist as well, because that is a permanent closed fist. Due to our transformation, we do have rotation at the waist. We got the arms out of the way. And then the legs cannot go forward and backwards. These are solid right there. That's kind of unfortunate. As you saw, we can go in and out on the leg. That's about it. The legs are just going to do that. Our model was known for lack of articulation. So this guy actually has pretty good articulation considering the line he's coming from. Once again, if you have the missile, I'll just take this one from Megatron. You can load that in there. And you can still use this function right here. And he still makes the sound. Set that guy off to the side. Now, again, uh, we have some more stuff for the Minicon to do here. Uh, so we've got Minicon ports on the arms. So you can mount them on either side. Now, if you go on this side, you can mount the Minicon there. And then you can slide this out. This is actually really cool. Slide this forward. And Galvatron has a little shank. That comes out of his fence right there. We'll pull this guy off so you kind of see how that works. That's actually really neat. I like that a lot. Okay, so there's that. And then over here, we, he has like this power-up mode. If you open this up, and then you take this guy and just kind of stand, you know, just extend him all the way into robot mode and extend his cannons and just kind of bend him over at the waist. He can go in here, line him up, and then these are going to line up with his back just like that so now he's got this kind of a cannon thing coming out of his shoulder and then once again we'll go ahead and uh, uh get these guys out of here i should have left those out i put these guys back in here for the robot mode and i should have actually left them out so i'll use these two plus the one that i borrowed from megatron so we'll have one that's off color and so we're going to open this up 
And if you look in here, it's it's kind of hard to make out, but right there and right there are a couple of indents where you can put these missiles. And this this is really tricky. This really doesn't work that well. But this is meant to have all three missiles loaded in here. Like this. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, there we go. We'll put that one there. It's supposed to be able to hold the third one. And it doesn't do it very well. But I would be remiss if I didn't show you. You know what? We're just going to do it with the two. So the idea is that you can load those missiles right there. And he's had, yeah, shoulder missiles there, <laughs> shoulder cannons there. That's not working. Forget that, 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 yeah, it's in the instructions, but yeah, and anyway, we're going to forget that happened. <laughs> and then finally, one last thing we can do, we're going to take clench here. I almost called him leader one. You can extend him straight out just the way we had him. And then if you look at his arms, quote unquote, you can see that he's got one with a fist right there. And then one that's really like nothing. It's kind of like a flat peg there. So what you can do there is move this one up, leave that one down. And this is supposed to be a handgun for Megatron as well. He's supposed to be able to hold that like a gun, just like that. And I guess that works well enough. But you know what I like to do? I like to put him back in his vehicle mode and then pop him right there. I think that looks the best. That's the same thing that I do with my Megatron. I keep him on his uh, on, on his arm like that. I just think that looks better. And you know, it's, uh, it's kind of evoking back to G1 Megatron with his arm cannon, so I like that. Now, Megatron does have one final attack. This is his power-up attack, and unfortunately, the concept is cool, but it doesn't work that great. So the idea here is we're going to take Clench, and what he would do, if I remember correctly on the show, he would just go ahead and plug into the back right here. If I remember correctly, that's how, how he did it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take Galvatron's arms here, take him all the way up, and we're going to elevate the figure right here from the center, and it's just going to extend right there at the waist, and the whole turret is going to rotate around to the front and we're going to move the cannon to face forward like that and then we're going to close Megatron back up again like that. So now the idea here is that we have this little knob here. Make sure that he is all the, the way in. Yes, the power is his. All right. So <laughs> we got him all the way close and we got this little knob here and what we're supposed to be able to do is turn this knob and the turret will turn and as you can see it it kind of tries to but then it stops something is not catching and this is very common on these figures this just stops working if i were to take the turret and rotate it you'll see that the little handle if you ignore the sounds you'll see that the little handle or the little crank there is in fact turning okay but when you try to do it yourself it just doesn't it just does not work which is unfortunate okay get it to catch it see nothing happens so unfortunately that just eh, almost did it almost did it yeah that's it's just it just doesn't work <laughs> that's unfortunate but that's a very common breakage with this figure um so to reset it you would just extend megatron chest back up again bring this all the way around now when you put this away you want to watch and make sure that the little handle piece is going to catch on this little catch right here on the top so when you bring that down, bring it down slowly and make sure that the crank handle falls in place right there. Okay. Bring this back around to the front. Arms down. We'll take clench. And we'll put him back in his arm again, uh, just the way we like him. And uh, there you go. That was Galvatron's <laughs> Nidicon power-up attack. So again, very cool. Uh, not something that I was specifically looking for. I just happened upon it uh, uh, during that meetup. And he was a really good price, so I picked him up because why not? It is a good, fun mold. It, there's a lot of playability. There's, As you can see, there's all kinds of stuff that you can do with this mold. It's a very, very fun toy. And I think that about covers the Transformers Armada Galvatron. What did you think of this figure? Let me know by leaving me a comment down below. Give me some thumbs up, subscribe, and share with your friends. If you like what you see, spread the word. Get everybody over here so that we can keep the channel growing. Hit on that donate button if you feel like it. I sure would appreciate it. It would help the channel grow. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.